Okay. All right, before we begin, um, I want us all to stand and take hats off if you have them on to salute the flag, please. Flag at the back of the room. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Great. <coughs> all right, I am, uh, Ed is not here tonight, so I am chair for the evening, acting chair. Uh, call to order this meeting of the Nottingham Planning Board for Wednesday, May 8th. We are in conference room one. Before we begin with the agenda, I will have us go around the room and introduce yourselves, please. Robert Davies, Altana. Skip Severance. John Warren. Sorry, I skipped over here. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Chris Evans. Just did a roll here. <laughs> Teresa Bascom. Drew Stevens. Doug Cummings, member. Blair Haney, SRPC. Okay, and because Ed is not here, we will have Buzz seated and voting tonight to give us a full board, okay? All right, the first order of business is case number 24001, a lot line adjustment, and 24002 sub. This is um, application from Joseph Falzone on behalf of the Forgotten Mountain Realty Trust requesting um, requesting approval for a 16 lot open space subdivision off Raymond Road in Nottingham. The properties are identified as tax map number 69 and lots 17 and 18. If the applicant and his representatives would come forward, please. We did receive new maps on Friday. Hopefully everybody was able to pick them up ahead of time to look at them a little bit. We also had an email to us. Yeah, if you're okay with looking at yeah, I'm, gonna... I'm so glad for you. Are you referring to the updated plan? <laughs> yes, this one. Um, uh, if you would please um, give us an update from the last meeting we ha had with you guys, which I wasn't here for, but I believe it was the end of March. Yep. And let us know where things stand, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, good evening, everyone. Scott Cole from Beals Associates. I think you know developer Joseph Falzone. Behind me we also have uh, attorney Tim Phoenix. To update the board, uh, we've been pretty busy since our last meeting. Uh, I'm gonna start with plans. Plan-wise, we have resubmitted updated plans. Uh, really the only necessary major items on that had to result with our previous plan board meeting and that was in the discussion of the side slopes. Uh, we went in depth on the pros and cons of the two to one side slopes and storage areas and so forth. Um, it was the consensus that the, maybe the two to one slopes may not be appropriate for this job. At least that's the feeling we got. So we have redesigned the entire job to three to one slopes as the town regulations apply. So we would like to retract our previous waiver requests for the two to one as it is not necessary. Um, other than that, there are Plans uh, relatively remain the same. Um, of course, the cross sections and the profiles have changed to reflect that grading. We also have made uh, two submittals. We went to uh, the River Advisory Committee and sent them a, a full application of the, of the materials as well as New Hampshire, D uh, New Hampshire DES AOT division. Uh, we have submitted to them. I believe they have gave it a file number but have not actually uh, review that at this time uh, so we await their comments we also had a uh, pretty detailed meeting with the Conservation Commission on uh, this Monday night um, we went over quite a few different aspects of the subdivision I believe they have actually issued a letter to that effect uh, with multiple bullet points on that which we can discuss um, I think Joe maybe may have a couple comments on that as well um, other than that, we are waiting for basically receipt of review comments at this point now will be from New Hampshire DES, uh, New Hampshire Fish and Game, who has been contacted by Brennan Quigley of GES. He's the, if you remember, he's the gentleman that did the wetlands and the uh, 
the inventory study of the property. So they have been um, aware of the job, they've made contact, and we await their formal review comments. Um, other than that, I will entertain any questions. I have a question, if I may. Yes, sir. The place where we're talking about it's going to rise up 16 feet, and you're going to do 3 to 1 now instead of 2 to 1, mm -hmm. right? 16 feet, so that's a bank going up 16 feet. There are going to be guardrails there? There is. The right. guardrail is actually warranted in either situation, 3 to 1 or 2 to 1 because of the height, so that really didn't make any difference. It's because of the height? Yep. Okay, thank you. Yep. So the guardrail uh, was proposed and still is. Um, guardrails, while we are on the subject. Um, lot 3, 4. Um, what page are you on on the maps? Pardon me? What page are you Eight. looking at? 616. On the plan, seem to indicate, you know, over the first hundred feet like a 30-foot drop and um, maybe at, uh, Scott I have to apologize I'm not an engineer I don't have the letters after my name like you do I know you've spent many years with this so um, my apologies for not being very articulate about what I'm trying to say here mm -hmm. it appears that there's a great deal of slope right off the road on lots three and four and um, is a guardrail warranted there? They seem to slope straight down from their um, 30 feet from the road towards um, where, where the, um, the um, septic area is. Um, and the driveways may have some slopes too, which exceed what I saw on the regulations as 8% mm -hmm. in our town regulations. What can you, oh, and on the driveways too, while you're entering that conversation, um, the driveway regs seem to have this negative slope um, requirement on on the uphill side where the uh, water doesn't run down into the um, road. Um, I, I can't discern whether there is a negative slope off the road on the um, on the um, uphill side of the the um, driveway. So if you can talk about the guardrails there, maybe and the. Um, and the uh, driveways, that would be great. Yep, so on lots three and four, if you look at the proposed contours, actually on those two lots, they pretty much blend right into existing grade rather quickly. So that's why guardrail would not be warranted. Um, we fully think that those lots will be, the, the house will be up front and then the septic and then there'll be walkouts. So you can certainly recapture some of the grade and build the house into the grade versus filling the whole lot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, especially with the, the maximum requirement of 8% for the driveways, you can only go so much anyways. So, but the, the way you determine if slope was warranted is the proposed, how the vertical difference in elevation meets from proposed grade to existing grade. For a three to one slope, anything over 10 feet guardrail will be warranted, which would be five contours. And these are almost blending right into existing grade rather quickly. So that's why guardrail isn't warranted there. Um, for the driveways, yeah, it's pretty typical. We have to deal with the same thing in Barrington. They require a short negative pitch before going up to a driveway, mm -hmm. uh, which is fine. Even on a um, descending driveway, what they'll usually do is just put a little six-inch hump so it goes down, up, and then down. And all it does is, as you said, it stops any of the drainage in both, both directions, from either going from the road to the houses or the houses to the road. So, um, the culverts underneath that, that, too? Excuse me? Are there culverts underneath that? In, in the well, this one here is actually, so the curbing will be in trouble <coughs> with the road because it's Cape Cod. Yeah. Um, so, so what they'll do is they'll simply, for the driveways, they'll just have a shorter curb so you have that lip and the rainwater can't get over it anyways. So on three where the contours, there's one, two, three, four contours that looks like in the first <coughs> 10 feet. That's... Um, more of a drop than 8%, I think. On lots three and are you on page 20? I'm on page 16, looking at lot three. Page 16. I think it's sheet 16. Oh. Yeah, for proposed grades, you want to look at sheet 20. So that shows you where the road elevation meets the existing elevation.
So if you've seen on lots three and four, the darker proposed contours. G20. Oh, okay, cool. So really that the road in that section in front of lots three and four are almost at grade. So lot two has a grade to it, right? It's got some, yeah, two, four, six at the deepest. Yeah, but graded off to the sides. It, it's graded off to the sides, either down or up. I, I can't tell from this. But yeah, for the yeah. driveway. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <clears throat> no, that's fine. Um, I thought somewhere in the regs it said something about a, um, a lot plan that showed the driveways so that, you know, we might be able to see this rather than on a bazillion scale or whatever this happens to be. I don't know. Um, is there any subsequent plans coming in that show individual lot plans, driveways for these lots? Well, the driveways are shown to the extent that they're designed right now. We, you usually can't go any further than that until you do a septic plan without knowing exactly where the house is going far or back or, you know. Usually the requirement pertains to, you know, 10 or 20 feet past the right-of-way line because past that it's kind of an unknown. Right, in which I see the driveways are just, you know, stubbed on there. Yeah. I think that's in the regular, it says 10 or 12 feet onto the lot and then. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep, so that's what we tried to display. So you're saying there is a negative pitch on the um, uphill side of that, on those driveways? Well, there certainly will be. At this scale, it's kind of hard, but, you know, a septic plan that's will That's what help. I'm saying. It's hard yeah. to see that at this scale. It's hard to, to, to display that because, I mean, a six inch you won't see in a two-foot contour. Difference, I should say. All right. I got a clarification question on... Sheet six, <clears throat> I think this was brought up um, by a previous board member, and I don't know if, I don't recall there being any um, answer given, but on uh, page sheet six, excuse me, um, there's a note that says easement to control beaver dam, CRF plan one. What is that, what is that about? I actually contacted the surveyor. Um, Believe it, it's just a legal note that was put on a very old plan, and we actually don't know what it's for because I don't even think there's a view to him there. Okay. I think it was for the right, if by natural occurrence one was built, whoever that plan references to had the ability to take it down. Okay. But again, I'm not positive of that. But I did confer with the licensed land surveyor, and he said it was very vague, but he wanted to note it because it was found on another survey plan. Okay, makes sense. Um, also, the, there was supposed to be a vernal pool assessment done. We haven't seen that. Um, what's the status of the vernal pool assessment? Yep, that was done. We went into quite the review on that uh, at Monday night's CONCOM hearing yeah. uh, with Brendan Quigley. Okay. Um, there's a, a number of pools that were found. I, I do know that they're all in the open space. Uh, we went into, Brendan went into quite detail on that. I, I didn't do the study, so. Um, right. We haven't received that updated study either. Yeah. Yeah. I know the CONCOM did. I thought you did as well. Has anybody received the updated environmental impact assessment with vernal pool data? I I know not. From the yeah, that letter came out, was it today? Today. Yeah. We haven't had a chance to yeah. read it. By email. Right. The CONCOM? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. No, not the, sorry, not the CONCOM's response letter. The updated environmental impact assessment from Gove Environmental that we were supposed to get. Yeah, I know he did a vernal pool report, and he did note to the Conservation Commission, um, and again, excuse me if I, I don't do that work, so. There's data sheets for every vernal pool that he fills out, and he, he knows, um, he does need to send those to the Kong Kong because they weren't included, I guess, in, in the study. Yeah, it's not referenced here either. So, so that's supposed to be done. But I know the, okay. the vernal pool report is done, and, and we spoke of that Monday night, so. We can double check and make sure that if you don't have it, that we, we'll get it to you. Yeah, we would like to see that, I think. Um, I'm also wondering, you know, we've talked about the culvert design for that section of road. Um, that's going to be raised up 16 feet, um, the one that was subject to the, the waiver that you now are um, retracting. Um, is that still proposed to be a couple of 
pipes, 12 inch and 18 inch? At this time. Okay. Um, I would really like to see a culvert design that is more um, amenable to wildlife, especially. Yeah, the we actually went over that again that are, in detail uh -huh. Monday night. Um, it, just so you understand, I tried to relay that to on Monday night. So, if you think of where the road crossing is now, yeah. the shape of it is a very broad parabolic curve. Then you add a road, and you have the same amount of water, and especially with a look. It's just for instance, we we're going to put a box cover. Now you're channelizing that water to one point, which makes a large increase. That's not allowed by New Hampshire DES. So that would actually require a waiver to their statutory regulations, okay. which is not usual. So that's why the way we did it is to, we are required to regulate the amount of water leaving the site to the amount it is tomorrow will be as it is yesterday. So we have a small culvert to handle the smaller storms, like a two year storm. Then we stage it with the bigger culvert so the higher storms also can go through that culvert when it overflows. Gotcha. Um, but we ran, we did run some quick numbers on a, you know, a four, like a four by four box culvert and it more or less blows up. So it's, but we can, we're still gonna obviously talk with New Hampshire Fish and Game and DES about that right. um, and go into more detail on that. But that's kind of the, the, the functioning that we're facing yeah, in that. Yeah, I understand that. So, you know, what you're taking away as far as, you know, wildlife access to that area by building a road through it, especially something like the endangered species that exists on the site in and around the site, um, you need to, you know, part of what our job is, is to make sure that the natural resources on the site are preserved and maintained. And so I think in a case like this, it would warrant going through and trying to get an exception to that, um, um, that rule in order to make a culvert that would allow for wildlife passing. The way the road is designed now essentially creates an ecological trap where any um, animal that comes around that side of the property encounters that road and either has to cross that, that road and endanger itself or go out to um, Route 156. Um, and so the problem is that the culverts don't allow any type of crossing outside of over roads to go through that area. And with these endangered species on this site, a single individual <clears throat> dying can spell doom for that entire local population. And that's why it is of critical importance that this site design actually accommodate the species that exist, not a general wildlife accommodation, but accommodation specific to this species that we know exist uh, in proximity. And because of that, and knowing their natural history exists on the site as well. Mm -hmm. And so having, I have, Actually, you'll be excited as an engineer. Um, UNH and New Hampshire Fishing Game on, uh, in November of just last year released a design guidance for wetland road crossings to reduce Blanding's turtle mortality risk. And so it's got a number of design guidances in there, like an openness ratio um, of 0.82 square feet per foot of opening so that you have visibility for wildlife so that they'll actually use that uh, culvert to cross. Um, these culverts also shouldn't be perched. They need to be set or embedded at grade so that mm. an animal doesn't have to try to go up into the culvert in order to access it. Uh, they shouldn't be any less than two feet wide. They shouldn't be covered by grates or screenings at the openings or within them. Um, they should preferably use a natural substrate along the culvert to aid in wildlife movement, not something like riprap within the culvert itself. Um, Although riprap, uh, riprap should be used along the uh, road slope to uh, provide a break in the riparian continuity between uh, kind of you know the lower land and the slope up to the road, so that the wildlife will use the culvert instead of trying to cross the riprap that leads up to the road. Um, and because of that, I would also suggest going back to a two-to-one uh, slope for that area. Wait, well, because wait, wait a minute. You are one of the most at loud and advocate people that didn't want the two to one. Yeah, yes, yeah you I, were, yeah, because you wanted want to be, make I sure that somebody understand. could climb the three to one side slope. So exactly. we spent a lot of time and money revising these plans, and now you're saying you like the two to one better? I mean, that. Scott, I, no, no. Scott, I, so, I, I, I brought up the two to one. Yeah. Um, and, um, 
and you guys jumped ahead and um, it was regarding sight distance from the driveways in particular and um, slopes on and snow and snow and critters um, and it did not actually I, I like the two to one in this particular location because it had less impact to the wetland area that made sense yeah I think you you're confusing I had no opposition to that I had some questions about it but we decided to move on. There, there um, may have been, you, you may have brought up that there was a slope, you know, that so, so much challenge concern, for the okay. turtle crossing yeah, this road to get My up concern is that if the culvert was going to remain as it was, you know, just pipes, um, that a, 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 um, a two to one would end up, you know, channeling these because it's a you know steeper slope that it would end up channeling the animals over to Route 156, which is even mm. more dangerous. Route so that's what I'm saying. A two to one, feet. a two to one is appropriate when an appropriate culvert is also installed. Okay, if the, that culvert weren't installed, then yeah, a three to one, you know, maybe more uh, appropriate. But to minimize the amount of culvert you'd have to make, a two to one makes more sense. I think you may be totally took away a, a wrong impression from that last meeting. I did not have a, an, a strong opposition <laughs> to that two to one, and I'm can sorry I, if you took that away. Please do, yeah. Okay, your <clears throat> exact words were that you would defer to what the culverts were. If there was a three to one slope, you said, the critters could crawl up it easier than a steep slope. That's correct. Okay. We don't want critters crawling up the slope. Right. So I went back and spent $10,000, redesigned the whole project because of the comments that were brought up. Okay. And the comments that you misunderstood, well, apparently. Well, then both of us who are professionals and do this misunderstood. You made the comment that a box culvert might not be necessary if there was a three to one slope because it allowed the critters to be able to climb up the side. I don't think I ever would have said that a box culvert was not necessary. We're not getting answers being, we got two opinions here of what happens. Well, you, were you here at that hearing? I've been at all the meetings. I don't know, I was not here at the last one, so I can't have any input on this. In what, well, I don't think there's any situation in which I would have said a box culvert is not necessary on the site plan. I may have said if, if a culvert is not put in, then a three to one is preferable over a two to one. There was always but, two culverts. We were always two yeah, culverts. no, it's the pipe culverts that are the problem. It's a it's a wildlife culvert that can actually let wildlife pass. That is the, the issue here. There needs to be something like that on the site. Right, and we have gone to the Concon meeting. Yep, and they suggested that we enlarge the lower culvert where the animals can access it. Right now it's 12 inches, and we talked about increasing that to six inches, 16 inches. I am not putting a box culvert in, oh, so you know. You can advocate it for all you want. It's not required under the state regulations, and it's not required just because you want it. Yeah, it's not required because I want it. It's required because we are, as a board, um, supposed to, uh, offer and require uh, design uh, changes that minimize the impact and reduce adverse impacts. We've done that. That you have not done that adequately. Well, the state, not for the, listen, not for the, the species gonna, that exist on this site. Okay, we're gonna comply with what the state tells us to do. And yet we don't know what that is yet, right? Because you said you're Correct. reading comments. We well, I, I got something in tonight. I haven't read it from the state right uh, before I was coming here. It just briefly went by, read it. Yeah. Uh, That's uh, part of the part of the review process is, you know, there's, and again, that there's also two different agencies. So you have your, your DES agency, which is water. Right. And then you have your fish and game agency, which is critters. So wildlife, I should say wildlife, sorry. So they understand there's differences in the designs and, you know, one may dictate a change versus the other. And so that's why there's those agencies need to actually talk to each other and then talk to us and then we kind of come up with a result. So, and to, <laughs> re to really hit, we hear from both of those, those bodies, we, we really don't know what direction we need to go in. And it would be the same for us as far as a decision goes because we haven't seen the information yet and just received the Conservation Commission's 
report and have not I have not had a chance to read it yet we just got it today so a letter yeah for, 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 and I'm going to add that we haven't received the engineer review of the new plan, and um, I, I have not either. So I don't. Know so what's going um, on. you know, and I don't feel qualified to engineer review your plan, sir. Sorry, you have the letters after your name. I don't. Um, so we're relying on that. We're relying on Fish and Game. Uh, Fish and Game states um, uh, based on the um, New New Hampshire, um, but. Uh, um, board for that that data check um, that there are sightings of endangered species and uh, their comments were uh, we are required by law to provide recommendations for projects prior to certain permit issuance um, so we are relying on their expertise we're relying on the uh, con conservation commission's suggestions and expertise they are calling for a um, a uh, third party uh, wetland expert to go in and assess the um, areas adjacent to the road where this three to one, two to one culvert discussion is being had right this minute uh, so that we're not qualified to actually make a decision on that until we see um, feedback from all these different agencies. Um, and um, it's, it looks like our duty, according to our regulations, to make findings that you know this uh, complies with all the town regulations and state regulations and I don't think we have sufficient information to do that today uh, thank you for your patience um, it takes a long time I, th I think we need to extend our meeting is what we really need to do right now we, we were always going to extend that meeting okay. but yes, we sir. had to come back and update you okay that, that's that's not new news Oh, okay. all right. Well, we're not, we're not, not, you to feel bad. Like, we're not here for an, <laughs> we're not here for an approval. We're not going to push for approval. We're here to make progress. Yeah. Okay. And I got a response to the concom. If you're going to go over the concom tonight, no. well, I have questions about it too because I read it. So I have There's a lot a of things in there that I've never seen before ever. Well, you, I have not had a chance to go over. You can't make loud, you can't make loud, loud noise in your yard. You, I, you can't. I again. There's a lot of things in there I read, but if we're when we get there, I'll be happy to discuss that as an open public, just a one on one. But we, we so we just it received it today. Yeah, <coughs> today. Oh, Shouldn't we have time today. to actually look it over? Like, no. Um, we shouldn't have time to look it over. I just read it. <laughs> he just he just read it now, but there's only we do. I only have four comments, so the rest is unfortunate. You're skipping I, me for what reason? You already have it. It's in your folder. No, right? he said these are his comments. It's 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 the all their content, and in blue, are my three or four. Why comments. why why did you skip me? I, because I like you more than anyone. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but yeah, we, we do want to go go over this. All right, and I and I know that you do, and but I would really like to give the conservation commission a chance to. Talk about their report yeah. before we hear your comments yeah, back, I agree. okay? 100%. All right. Does anybody have anything else for Mr. Falzone or? Yeah, I do. I'd just like to read to you um, our subdivision yeah. regulations, part 14.1, section 3. Um, lots shall contain contiguous areas of developable, developable land such that the driveway, building, water supply, and sewage disposal and other improvements can be constructed without filling of wetlands or other such adverse impacts that could be eliminated by different subdivision design. The number of lots may be reduced by the board to reduce adverse impacts. The board shall have the authority to require design changes to minimize impacts regardless of the actions of other local or state permitting actions, such as the issuance of a permit to fill wetlands for a driveway crossing. So I thought you should know that when you're saying that we don't have the authority to uh, require you to remember, make some remember, slight it's a, changes. As you've been here before, it's a vote of the whole entire board, not one person's opinion on the board. Uh, I can have my own opinion on the 3-1-2-1. Right. I like the 3-1. Right. Thank you for doing it. Yeah. All right, I've seen your developments before. Um, you're increasing the stuff what you said in here. Again, we can talk more about it, but thank you for what you've presented us already. Thank you. I have a question before we move on, and it's got nothing to do with any of the critters or the three to one. 
And <laughs> forgive me if this, is, uh, this has been asked before, um, but when you, when you take these houses to market, what do you think it might be the average price? Well, it all goes, goes by square footage. Yep. If it's senior citizens buying a house, most of them now want one, one level, and it'll be a smaller 15 to 1600 square foot house, and that might be five or six hundred thousand dollars. And you might come some someone comes along that has climbed the ladder, and they got four or five kids, and they want to build a house for eight or nine hundred thousand dollars. And if they want to pay for it, we'll sell it to them. But that's what the market. That's how the market will drive it. Okay. But a lot of people are going one story. The older people. Okay, and that makes sense. You know, I'm personally I'm looking for uh, to help with a shortage we have in in New Hampshire of affordable housing. Five hundred to eight hundred. I don't consider that affordable. Well, right, it's right, just my opinion. Okay, but right, right now I know because I've finished a couple of affordable projects. It was at like 450. That was set by the state. In each uh, January or February, based upon market conditions, they reset what the affordable price is. And that gets applied when we're in towns, and I don't think your town has this regulation, but some towns will require that you have to have 20% affordable housing. 20% of the housing becomes actually non-profitable, and you make it up on the other 80%, and then they take in the 20% and lock it in for 30 or 40 or 50 years. Yeah. And that's how they create their affordability. Now, I don't know if you have that regulation or not. So you're saying the state sets the number for what's affordable? Right. And here in Nottingham, what's the median price for a home? If you looked on today, yeah, hmm. you ain't getting a house in Nottingham. Yeah, how many homes are even up? Yeah. The, even the, the average price across the state is over five hundred thousand right now. Right. And um, and to build something affordable, you really truly need subsidies um, from the government. It's it's hard to achieve, and you know we we would put this burden on a developer, and they right. they, they could, can't do it. It's it's the lot prices, the development prices. Mm. Mr. Falzoni just spent ten thousand extra dollars to redraft the plan. It, it just costs a lot to um, go through the whole process. So it is a problem, and it's how how is it going to get solved? Is is something that we should all try to envision here as the planning driving this big planning board bus. But um, it's it's a statewide problem. And I, I guess I have to wrap my head around the idea that four fifty is affordable. Yeah. Mm. You know, to me, it's like, <laughs> I think I bought mine for 90 just a few years ago. A 30, few? 30, 32 years. I was going to say. So I'm few. sorry. Thank you for the information. All right. Does so anybody have anything else? Skip. Um, I'm really concerned about the uh, open space area being part of an HOA. Has, has, have you guys gone towards other avenues? I haven't seen it in any of the documentation. Yeah, yeah we, we, when we met with the Conservation Commission yeah. two nights ago, uh, one of the topics discussed was could we deed it to the town? Yeah. So the town would have no. I like that idea either. But anyway, go ahead. They, <laughs> you know, they said that, they said that, that and, and maybe one of the members could speak, but the statute doesn't allow you to do that, yeah. that the fee has to be held by the homeowners association, but you can put an easement layer or restriction on it. And I think that's the direction we're heading in. In the CONCON Con report talks about enforcement of the HOA and that, and that open space. Enforcement by HOA or by the town ain't gonna happen. You need somebody that's, that's into that, like a CELT. Or I think the recommendation like was a third party? Yeah, our, our recommendation was an annual yeah, inspection. Right. Yeah. That's what uh, we, we did in the town of Rye. Yeah. A lot of money there, too. Yeah. You know, they, they well, just wanted everything. I, I think Revolutionary has that thing, that kind of a thing with yeah. the medallions and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, we have to do the medallions. We have to do that, yeah. And we submitted the fish and game medallions to yeah. your yeah. Conservation Commission. And the way they did it is they built into the HOA that the HOA pays a licensed engineer a person that inspects environmental lines and once a year 
they have to do a report that the site was walked and no one's dumping clippings, no one's throwing their furniture out there, right. no one's cutting trees, yeah. no one's dumping automobiles, and this happens. <laughs> and, and they're going to retain enforcement power. If the HOA doesn't enforce it, the town can enforce it, and they can put a lien for the illegal fees and everything. And the person can't sell their house, so you know you're going to get paid. It's just win. Somehow, yeah. It concerns me. That, that's all. <laughs> I, I understand the the flow. Yeah. It's just there's, there's a lot of stop signs. It seem like to me can come up that would stop that flow, but it wouldn't necessarily happen with a third party like a CELT. I mean, I, I don't know, a land trust that would, would cover it. i was just wondering if you guys were looking into that at all yeah you mean an inspector no uh, somebody that would own that parcel as a as a conservation parcel not to date and this what we have and I know or I hear that some of these agencies like Deer Paws and them yeah they have way too much to handle now yeah. that's also very true right <laughs> but that's their job <laughs> I don't know. okay thanks okay. anything else I'm glad you brought that up. Uh -oh. um, okay. Um, I, I meant to add to my list of other things that we need to rely on according to the regulations. It looks like we need um, legal review on the HOA documents mm -hmm. um, before we issue any sort of finals. So I don't know if that's been um, put in motion or worked on or it's just developing right now. We haven't gone there yet. Yeah, because it's we're going to have to put some of the fish and game language. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yes. We're not to the point where it's going to go to town council, but they, normally there's a condition of the approval that you can't do anything until town council signs off the review. Okay. I, I, I read that we can't give a final approval until we get that review, but that I may be wrong about what... You're right. Final is correct. Yeah, final. That's correct. Yeah, final. Yeah. There's okay. a difference between final and conditional. Okay. Um, while we're on the HOA, um, I do have a couple of um, points that... Um, I my my personal perspectives, but um, they, perhaps other people on the board shares these. Um, in our regs, um, um, you know, it talks about um, appro providing appropriate wildlife corridors. Um, it talks about um, trails, and uh, there are existing trails. And there was a comment by somebody, maybe it was a concom. I I, I read through the entire file, hundreds of pages and plans today and yesterday, and. Uh, um, so my brain doesn't walk everything down here. It's not all in here. Um, so the, the, the quick dumb question is, um, are you doing anything with trails there so that you know, there's an actual access to some of these um, areas? And um, in, in parking, um, I'm seeing this hill going up um, that's pretty steep. Um, we had a subdivision a long time ago in where there was a steep hill going up and when it got icy and bad people parked their cars at the bottom of the hill and walked up to their houses uh, you have a 10 percent grade there i think it was a 10 percent grade too we to answer your question we meet the grade so we, you know, we comply with the grade okay so what the, the question was would you consider um maybe a couple parking spaces in that open space area they don't um, want parking spaces you, no? you you just said you want to no, they don't can, they've never told me that I can do parking spaces. They who? The town. I've done 400 houses here. Okay. All right? They, no, they don't want parking spaces. We would not recommend parking spaces. Yeah, I know. No? Uh, okay, that's, uh, that's why I say, maybe just no. my opinion. I'm just throwing that out there on the table. It's more impervious surface that we got to put down for pavement for the parking spaces. It's more infrastructure. It's just, the town would not in my opinion, would not be uh, anyway. Open. We'd have to have three meetings on who's going to plow it. <laughs> three? <laughs> Boy, it would be a well, nice... This, this is a private road. They're going to be plowing it. Yeah, no, I know, I know. See, we've already road. got it's there. Public road. It's not a private road. That's if it gets approved, but we, we'll figure talk about that. <laughs> <Yeah. later. laughs> okay. uh, Chris, to answer the, the first half of your question, <clears throat> the open space access between lot 11 and 12, mm -hmm. there's an existing uh, tote road there. So you, that's in the open space. So all the residents there can certainly 
uh, if they want to, they can access the open space there. So there is, and that leads to all the other trails. So the trails are there and usable. I cut two, two miles of trails in there, besides all the trails that are there. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed there's a trail. We stumbled onto your lot the other day. Sorry for us trespassing. You know, it's not your lot yet. Um, the, um, we stumbled on, they were coming down from um, the, um, and found a beautiful, beautiful spot. Really, it's a beautiful lot. And that, you know, the people to see, you know, the, the wetland area and the, the whole is, is really quite nice. And, um, you know, the wildlife there. So just access for appreciation. The other um, thing on that was, um, when I look at this, I say, you know, here's this section where you're raising up the road and it's 22 feet wide. Um, and there's guardrails literally like on the sides of the road. So somebody- They're not, they're not on the sides of the road. How far in are the they? Plan. They have shoulders. How, two we feet? We asked the question at the last time. We explained I, it. We got to put shoulders beyond that. Well, actually for the guardrails, um, How far are the guardrails past the curbs? Where's the snow? But the going? face of the curb, and that's from a detail provided by your town's engineer. So the whole question with the side slopes came from what well, was related to um, your town engineer, who replied, which should be in your records, the opinion of their engineer was um, they didn't prefer the two to one. They thought it would be more hazardous for erosion controls. Yep. So based on that and other commentary, we revised it all to three to one, which led us to revisions on the guardrail for the termination of the guardrail, et cetera, and the spacing because the cross sections needed to be revised. So they sent us actually a, um, a state guardrail detail which showed the guardrail and the face where it's supposed to be. So we revised it to meet their detail. So that's per your town's engineer. So the face of the curb, will, uh, the face of the guardrail would be right at the back side of the curb. So if I'm walking my dog up this road and someone's coming down the road, I have no place to go. You have guardrails on both sides. It just reminds me of a, a bowling alley where they put the, the rails up on the side where the kid throws the ball down and they All right. can't go off. So I'm just going to, before you before even go off on that things. Yes. Most of these roads here, if somebody's walking their dog, I mean, Let's not throw the worst hypothetical situations out on this. Okay. About this, because most times if a person's going to walk in the road, it's going to be one car coming. I mean, you're talking about 99.9% .9 of the time. Check. And just because there's guardrails there, they're there for safety so people don't roll their car over. Yeah. Right? So, I mean, the, the purpose of them there meets way more benefit than the purpose of a person walking their dog on the road for that one particular instant. So... Thank well, you for having guardrails on both sides. And, and there, there would be a, a two-car lane anyway, isn't yeah, it? It's, it's going to be oh, 25 yeah, feet, 30 feet wide, wide, wide. So, so you'd, you'd, be, you'd have space to go close, with right. your dog. You have anything else, Chris? I, as I said, I, I was, it was a question and a kind of a, an observation and a question more than anything. Um, anything else before I... Open it up for um, public comment. No, I think we skip. On page, here. Oh, page 16, I asked this last time, but uh, you showed me the note um, for the, uh, the, the, what the heck was this? Oh, the sprinkling of the homes. Hmm? It, it's, that, uh, that seems too far into the document seems like it should be a page one kind of thing but i'm just wondering if that would be the normal place that somebody in town would look to find that it is a signed page so it is part of the plan but just don't forget you can't get a building permit without the fire department signing off and inspecting just so you know because we have to meet this the state's regulation yeah so you don't get a building permit so everyone's going to know they got sprinklers because you got to get a sign-off certificate. Okay. And the fire department has to inspect it. I hear you. Yeah. I just think the note's too far in. But I'll put it on every page if you want. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. There is a lot of other information that's here, but it yeah. doesn't seem to be necessarily related to the building permit. I didn't know if there was a better page yes. for building permit information or whatever. I don't know. I, it's here, so and it's a signed page, so it's going to get 
Well, these recorded. This one in the following plan, these here are the plans that show in detail the septic and well. So yeah. being utilities, that's where we put the fire suppression okay. note. Right. It's kind of a utility. So All right. that's I mean, the, we can put it on the boundary plan, but it kind of no, it's, it, nobody would expect it there. Yeah, that, that was that was the key right there. The boundary plan, yeah, you don't need it there, but this is the. All right, anything else? No? Did you want to hear from the uh, Conservation Commission before we go to? That's what I'm going to do. Thank I thought you, you were very going much. to public comment. Sorry. Well, they are they are part of the public comment. Um, if you wouldn't mind nope. vacating the table for a few minutes, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask the Conservation Commission folks to come up, please. Some whoever your rep is to give a little summary of your meeting with them. Are you guys prepared to do that? Are you guys prepared prepared for someone to come up and give a little summary of your meeting? Yes. Okay. Okay. Please uh, state your name and uh, the you're from the Conservation Commission, please. Cheryl Smith, Conservation Commission Vice Chair. Dallas Huggins, Conservation Commission member. Okay. Okay, so we met with the applicant Monday night, had a good conversation, and just to follow up on a couple questions that came up, they did present all of the information from the Vernal Pool assessment, it was very thorough, but we didn't have a copy of that yet either. So that, I mean, that was just recently done, recently compiled, and they were planning to get the Vernal Pool report to us, and I'm assuming a copy to the planning board as well. So that Vernal Pool assessment was very thorough, including counts of um, salamander egg masses and frog egg masses and how deep those vernal pools were, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So that, that was very thorough on that. Then there was another question about something that the, you didn't get a report on yet. Um, I think updated environmental assessment. Yeah, so that, um, that vernal pool assessment will be ad addended to the environmental assessment. So that will be updated. Okay. So you should have that and we'll have a copy of that as well. Um, so we went over a number, a number of points, um, basically to touch on the, the culverts that were, were discussed. Um, the way that was explained to us is that the box culverts could potentially increase the rate of flow going through that. So in an area of trying to compromise with, with what would move through there, having a larger culvert at the bottom, the applicants all dis also discussed rather than using plastic, which is sort of the norm for culverts now, to go with cement, um, which is tactilely, tactilely, however you say that word, um, more acceptable for critters, so to speak, or particularly amphibians or, or turtles to move through as opposed to plastic. Um, we talked about the possibility of instead of using a, a very sharp-sighted riprap in anywhere in that area of the culvert to, uh, and the applicants actually said that they had looked and possibly specked out what's called river stone, so it's a little bit smoother, um, would be easier, not as large as some of the riprap that's typically used along some, some culvert areas that not just um, amphibians have trouble with, but even larger animals and wildlife can get their feet stuck into and et cetera, and less likely to happen with river stone. So, so the applicant did look at that as well. Um, we also mentioned that the Natural Heritage Bureau report expired, or will expire in the middle of next month. Um, but the applicant, uh, his group, his environmental specialist explained that that was, um, because of the whole process with Fish and Game, if Fish and Games feels that they need to have an updated NHB report, they will request it, and then that goes into Fish and Games report. So instead of having them do that, it would get another file number if we asked for a new report at this time, which would complicate Fish and Games reviewing the file. Yeah. Oh, okay. Which made perfect sense to us. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, there was, I read through much of the materials today, too, and looking at the engineer's comments and then comments back from the applicant and engineer's report. The Cape Cod um, uh, curbing that's there is much more desirable, um, at least from a wildlife and amphibian standpoint, than the granite curbs that are more specified in our town regs. Those are square, steep-sided, 
hard and these Cape Cod berms that they have and that they're put into this design is more rounded and much more easily um, tra transversed or traversed by wildlife and amphibians. So a plus there. Um, we had made a number of other suggestions which have been in, in other areas as well. Um, low salt area for this because of the drainage into sort of critical areas and wetlands and, and with their catch basins, et cetera, and that can be posted and then the town can appropriately use low salt in that area. Uh, what else did we touch on? Uh, we did suggest and the applicant agreed um, the lower culvert uh, to be increased, the upper culvert not to be in increased, but the lower culvert to be increased as can, but in your discussion with the applicant, um, they're gonna look into that more and see what they can do. Um, they're, they're very willing to try and work on that, but did explain that the box culvert is just, um, doesn't seem to be appropriate in this case because of the way that the water flow would potentially go in that situation. But I think that's an ongoing thing that they'll be looking at. Can I make one comment? Yep. Um, just that New Hampshire Fishing Game will likely provide some guidance on that. They actually just completed a guidance document all about culvert, so um, there's a lot of updated things on, on wildlife friendly passage and so on. Okay, good. Uh, You're still waiting for that report, correct? You haven't heard from yes, we have Fish and Game. Mm -hmm. and, and the applicant will hear from Fish and Game. We won't hear from Fish and Game, but the applicant agreed to share their, it's, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's more done by, by email and stuff like that, the reports, and it's kind of a back and forth with Fish and Game. Yeah, and actually the, the email came in. Okay, so and then they would share that, share that with us and, of course, with the board as well in terms of what, what they had. I was going to ask, how long does that take? But Mr. Falcone, you said you got that already. Yeah, I haven't read the whole thing. Okay. And the town will get a copy of it, too. It's public, public information. And what, what was indicated was that for 30 days after that process has started is usually the expectation to have that come through. And the applicants went in the week after the 10th of April, I guess. So the timing seems appropriate within that. Um, to touch on this HOA, um, so we've had a number of discussions. Uh, Dallas and I both talked with Joe independently, a phone conversation about a month ago. Um, we've, you brought up uh, Highlands and, and that, that is an area that, that has a, they're not conservation easements. They're, they are deed restricted areas. Um, and so by that, the Conservation Commission has had to do the assessments on that year after year after year. And with a limited number of people, a limited number of resources, that has come become impossible um, for us to do in a timely manner. So that was why the request was done to the Board of Selectmen to have this done by some other agency. Mm -hmm. um, and then Joe explained that th there's a couple, another scenario that, that works out for this. Most of the, the land conservation Groups, you know, as, as you mentioned, Bear Paw, et cetera, uh, Selt, Spinoff, they're not taking on something that's this, even though it seems like a large open space and it's a large acreage, they're not taking on these kind of projects. So it, it seems to be a workable thing that happened in Rye where they can, they can have a, a third party. So when we say third party, it doesn't have to be an engineer. It can be a licensed wildlife specialist. Um, we mentioned a couple. Um, in our recommendations that work in our area that the, the Conservation Commission and others in this area have worked with as well. So, um, well, yeah, this open space does have some drainage um, receptacles. Correct. And, yeah. and that would be, I think, more engineer related, maybe not every year, but certainly. Correct, but that's, but that's, that's a whole separate inspection, that's a whole separate maintenance versus making sure that there are no violations of deed restrictions happening in the open space. Right. And that this I would all you. be written into deeds. I hear you. Um, and it seemed to be seemed to be workable with the example that they, they had. And you had another example where Fish and Game was involved with that too, wasn't it? Yeah, they come up with the language for the deed restriction. Right. Yeah. So and the applicant said that they would they would follow up with that from a, a legal standpoint with Fish and Game. Um, and have some other examples with HOAs that they've done that with in other communities as well. Uh, let's see. Uh, 
So one of the things that came up, and I know that Mr. Falzon has a, a you know has some disagreements where he's written down. Um, we do have the right to request. Doesn't mean that it has to be followed. Um, they do have uh, wetland scientists that have done the assessments, but we still have questions as to that one area where the road crossing and the road is going to be raised up 16 feet, exactly the classification of that. It does not meet the classification of a wetland because of one of three factors that is missing, but would just like to have another opinion on that. And that's up to the board whether or not they want to ask for that or not. Of course, we have no, no authority to really ask for that. It's a suggestion to ask for further clarification on that. Um, and and we, we did, even though I know that you said, Joe, that we didn't discuss it, we talked about having that reassessed. And I think we, the, the comment from Joe during our meeting was that it wasn't, really wasn't necessary. Um, let's see. Um, in open spaces, there's often uh, regulations or deed restrictions to the type of motorized vehicles, et cetera, that can be used in those areas. So I think most of the homeowners maybe would not want to have ATVs running around in that open space. Um, it's, it degrades the soils very quickly, and since a lot of this open space has very steep slopes in it, um, there could also be a personal um, liability and danger to that as well if, if motorized vehicles were allowed in, in this area. So that's why that was our suggestion. Um, to say nothing about degradation of the environment as well as, as threat to wildlife. Um, uh, mountain bikes. I'm sorry? What about mountain bikes? I, I think that's up to the HOA in a lot of our a lot of the open spaces or a lot of the conservation easements, mountain bikes are allowed. Um, again, depending upon the time of year that they're used, they can certainly tear up, up as well. Especially on steep slopes. Correct. Yeah. And that's kind of why I asked about like if they're going to do any trails or enhancements, because there are some existing trails that certainly might be um, used, There's no plan for the Conservation Commission to do yeah. any kind of enhancement with trails in there. Right. Um, that, that land would actually be owned by the owners of that property. Um, so the you know the town really doesn't have a say that you have to put trails through that. Um, there are existing trails that are that are used by people around that community now, by neighbors, and you know that I would imagine that would probably continue to some extent. Uh, and so the the final the final thing that we talked about, and we did talk about this at the meeting that once we got all of the final reports in from Fish and Game and, if necessary, another NHB report, um, we've already had the Vernal Pool report, just looking at that, we've, we've already said that we don't see that there'll be any issues with that, um, but that our final, you know, our final recommendations and approval for this would be dependent upon those reports. And I think I think that kind of summers. I didn't want to go over every single point that we had on this. Okay, so. thank you. Does anybody have any questions for? I do. I have one, just one question. Um, and I know you touched on it. You called it. Is it the Natural Heritage Bureau report? Correct. This is Lamprey River Advisory Committee. No, two different two different organizations. Right. Did you get the report from the Lamprey River? Yes. What is your feeling on that? Um, pretty detailed. Uh, that is another thing that the, the Fish and Game, um, as well as DES, will take into account um, when they make their recommendations back to the applicant and back to this board. So their final report, though their final point was, we recommend that no permits be issued for this project. That's, and that's, that's their recommendation. Okay. You don't concur with that? I, I wouldn't say that we necessarily concur with it or don't concur with it. We, okay. we are not a permitting agency. We don't have that kind of authority to make that recommendation. And but we did all, not all make that recommendation. All the reasons they gave, we're all environmental. They're, they're all conservation. Correct. Doug, I, I, I read that same letter and that same comments and did some research. And they are, they are an advisory co committee. And they're making recommendations. It doesn't. They're not binding, um, and um, they they may be some opinions in there that are more inclined towards the conservation side of the world than um, 
so we don't have to follow their recommendations. Oh, well, well, they, that. well they, they are their recommendations, and, and they are recommendations based on the preservation of the quality of the habitat around the Lamprey River watershed. So, so their charge is to protect the environment of the Lamprey River watershed, which is also a major drinking water source for many of the communities around Lamprey River. Um, so the more that environment degrades, the more likely that that river degrades as well. So that's part of their charge as well, and the tributaries that feed into the Lamprey River. Um, they had a lot of very good points. They do, and I see it. It's, it's like you said, it's a recommendation. It's not a mandate, but I was kind of interested to hear what you thought of it, that's all. Well, we, we did think that there were a lot of good points that the LRIC brought into that. Thank you. Anybody else? Comment? John, did you have anything for them? No? All right, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, um, I'll open it up for a the public hearing. It is now 8.01. Anybody want to speak for or against? Come up and state your name and um, where you live, please. Uh, Nate Burnett's 205 Raymond Road. I'm in a butter. I'm not really here to speak for or against the project, but I just want to express my um, appreciation and support for the sort of dynamic. You know, Joe and Scott and the team seems like are do, you know making efforts to increase the environmental sustainability of the project. Um, a lot of that is you know legal compliance, but there's some above and beyond you know elements, and obviously there's a a balance between you know um, you know what's financially feasible um, but I just want to you know express appreciation and support for you know their efforts the effort of the Planning Board and Conservation Commission you know to, to sort of move the project in that direction as much as possible and just want to you know commend you know the, that that continued conversation and right, thank you thank you also I want to express support for the three to one Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Huh? Anybody else? Speaking for or against? All right. I will close the public hearing. It's 8.03. You guys can come back up. Doug, I'd just like to, to let you know, and I actually took it tonight, that comment by Lamprey that they like to, they don't think it should be developed, they, they use that a lot. I actually pulled another one out. The only way they can do that is to buy it. That's yeah. the only way. You know, it's funny you should say that, because if you look at this document, yeah. that last page yeah. look like it's copy-paste. Yeah, it is. <laughs> look at it. I mean, they've, they've used that one quite often. I took another one. I can show you yeah. the new market. <laughs> yeah, they've yeah. used that quite a bit. All right. Anybody? Uh, one thing that they mentioned here, uh, so it's additional, the uh, conservation does not agree with the development team, where the area of the road height of 16 feet is not wetlands. We were just talking about that. And they recommend an independent licensed wetland sciences to be hired. Oh, I, I want to respond to that. I want a question. You willing to pay for it? No, no of course I don't want to pay for it. I already what had a, li a licensed person. But I want to go one step further so the Conservation Commission hears this. In the late 1990s, this wetland was already looked at, approved by the town, and a crossing was put in, in the same exact spot. And it was a larger project going through that area. This crossing has already been reviewed once and I've been to a site walk this is my fourth hearing here and two uh, productive meetings with the Conservation Commission and to ask me to do that now is not fair. If you had asked me to do it earlier it would be different but you already reviewed this project not even for me for someone else and approved it. I don't think you can hold us accountable for what happened no, in the 1990s. No, I know, I know, but it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's recorded, 
its history, its to this policy. But, but the environment is constantly changing. Good these species. Our understanding of how to protect these species has come a long way in the last totally 25 evolving, years. Yes. You know, so I, especially I, I, since I, a lot more has been developed up and there are a lot fewer of these animals around. Now it's even more important that we are able to protect them in some way. So I hear what you're saying about your frustration for something that was approved in the 1990s, but this is just a, just a point. That's a lot of you. years later, and a lot has changed. But anyway, I, I, for, right, folks, um, it we've had him do the update. We've heard from the Conservation Commission. We've said repeatedly that we will not be giving a decision tonight. So we do obviously need to. Um, put forward a motion to um, to continue this case um, to a date certain. Have you got Mr. Falzone? Do well, I, I think I agree uh, with uh, um, the commission brought up. You know, we got to wait for these other agencies to come in. Right. And of course, I follow the clock, and, and uh, I know when they're mandated, they have to respond or not. And I uh, think we'll have all everything straightened out by the uh, by the end of May. So there's no use of me asking you to continue for me in the month of May. Okay. I think your, your early hearing in June uh, is it the twelfth? The twelfth, yeah. Yeah, June twelfth. Right, and I would have met with the commission again to to uh, discuss with them what comes back from the state agencies. Okay, and don't forget that the deliverables would be a, a good 10 days or so prior so that we can get them within a week of the meeting, right? We try. Okay. And the only other question I have to ask the commission for their final opinion or recommendation to you is you meet on the 12th, right? Correct. I, I am uncertain if they meet on the 10th. And, we get the second Monday of the month, which yeah. is the 10th. So again, that means that it's a quick turnaround. Any comments that we have, this board will then not have enough time to read those comments, just like they didn't have enough time to read them today. Right. Not all of us did. But you read it while you were here, John. <laughs> while we were all talking at the beginning of the meeting. I read them at home, but I'm, you know. Hey, you it was just, raining. <laughs> not, not everybody has that opportunity if you've got a busy know, yeah. Wednesday. So then it's a suggestion to move it to the 26th so that there's adequate time to go to the ConCom? I, I, get, I, I, so the other possibility is, and that would have to be decided upon with the ConCom, um, is if we held a special meeting up the week prior, which is what we did this time because our normal meeting date oh, is right. next Monday. Okay, if you guys could do that, that would be great for us. So that we could have your comments ahead of time. Is it, it's really for those of us who are busy, <laughs> and those of us who are running a meeting, <laughs> who are running a meeting can't read the minutes when you get here. And I was here a half hour early. Um, so if you could, that would be great because we can poll the members and see if we can meet. Uh, okay. Early. Would that so work for you? Would that so the twelfth? It works for you, Mr. Falzo? Yes. All right. And you, Scott? Yep. Okay. Um, the worst case scenario, we can certainly just ask for a continuance to the okay. next meeting. So. All right. Yes. So you think if you don't hear back, and it's, um, we've got, it's what, DES? I'm trying to think of all of the groups you said you need. Christian, Christian name. name. The Vernal Pool Report. Natural Heritage Bureau, if Fish and Game requires an additional. Yeah. And each be four report. So there's one, two, three, four, four different agencies. Engineering approving. review. Engineering review. Of the uh, new pavilion. The only thing he's going to review is the three to one slope. Oh. Okay, Mike. Well, he's got a whole letter. We All right. Um, so I will entertain a motion to continue this pending the reports. Anyone? I second that motion. I'm not making it. Oh, you're not making it. I'm I thought I heard you say you're, you're entertaining. Okay. <laughs> All right. I will make a motion okay. to continue the uh, case uh, 
uh, 24-001 uh, LLA and 24-002 sub Falzone Raymond Road um, until the June 12th, 2024 meeting. At seven o'clock. What's that? At, At seven, seven o'clock. Yeah. At seven o'clock, yes. At town hall, if you really want to get it all in. At Town Hall. At Town Hall. Okay. On June 12th, 2024, at 7 o'clock p.m. at Town Hall. Don't show up in the morning. Conference room one. <laughs> second. <laughs> Thank you. I'll, I'll, second, I'll second that motion. Well, Buzz already Got did. It. Got it. Good. All right. All right. It's been moved and seconded that we continue case 24001 LLA and 24002 sub to June 12th, 20. June, excuse me, June 12th of 2024 at 7 p.m. at the town hall. And it's t uh, pending your all of your reports and with the deliverables. I think you have to vote on that motion. I know. Okay, sorry. I know. Just a reminder. That's okay. <laughs> so it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? I know how to run a meeting. I've done them for years. <laughs> Anybody? All right. <laughs> Do we need Seeing to none, we shall proceed to vote. All those in favor of the motion, as stated, please signify by saying aye. 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 And all those, any opposed? Okay, so it is seven zero zero. We'll see you in June. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. The next thing on our agenda is discussion of planning board fees ed has requested that we hold off on this until the next meeting he said that he we are still holding a meeting could you please have discussions out in the hall he said he's not had a chance to review this but um would hopes to have a a uh, update for us like a, something of a draft for our next meeting okay. okay i can pass them around at the end of the meeting and so you guys can take them with you tonight sure but basically ed and i ed jen who is uh my manager the director of the organization met to discuss um the town's overall you know budget reductions and then what that would do to our SRPC's contract yep. and then how it could be separated out into some of the you know softer work that I do which is like some administrative stuff and then you know ordinance creation things like that and then the sort of harder technical review which is like stuff like for projects like this so that you could bill that back to the developer or applicant I guess we could say and then the other part um, of funds go towards the other stuff so Jen Perfect. based on that discussion put something together sent it to Ed but just got there today Ed's email saying he was gonna be sick tonight and Jen's email to him you know crossed in cyberspace so um, Ed had asked uh, Teresa but I did it I had already had it printed out from Jen so I can share it with you um, I'd rather just give it to you tonight so I don't have to forget it next time um, <laughs> so you don't have to forget it <laughs> yeah because that's what will happen um, but yeah that's essentially what we're talking about is kind of creating two buckets for your contract um, one would be um, uh, to, to pay SRPC to do uh, some of the uh, review of like uh, regulatory review and different things like that and then um, the uh, you know how to do the charge back and then so in addition to so showing a new contract with srpc she also created a new fee she added it into your existing fee schedule so you could see how that would look that's what i'm trying to get to is so there's two documents it's like the new srpc contract and how that would look and then your new fee schedule and how that would look okay so um that's the basic gist and then, okay and that um it is because we our contract with y'all expires on the 7th, right? Uh, I mean, not the 7th, but this, in July. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yes, yes. It's, I think you have like another month and a half or something. And so you would need to have a new contract, but with your new budget, you know, you can't meet the old contract. So how can we, what's a way to look at slicing this up a little bit? Okay. So 
obviously there's a lot of other moving parts. I don't know your budget in terms of like what you can't afford, but this is, I think this is what Jen's attempt at meeting the feedback she got from Ed. Okay. So, can we consider things like you know a bake sale? <laughs> you know, sell books or something. Uh, we got to raise some money. Some plants. We need, yeah, plants. We need this contract. Oh, um, and I'll bring it for next time. I actually don't have enough copies, but she I did. Have, I have my own. I she it. did include um, fee schedules from other communities mm -hmm. to give yeah, you. Ed mentioned he was going to research that and compile that. Yeah, so she, they, she gave us a thank you or four to look at. And at least one of them, I know Wakefield, we do the same thing here with, and they do the same thing as what we're proposing here, which is the charge back to the builder, you know, the applicant. Um, so we have some familiar with it, familiarity with it on our end. It's a little extra lift because of just how I have to separate out my time if I'm the one still doing it or whoever it might be. But <clears throat> and then there's a little bit more on your end because you're going to have to manage the escrow account and stuff. But these are all things I think if this is the route you wanted to go, we could figure out. It's it's workable. Yeah. So, right. so Blair, you mentioned like regulatory <coughs> review. Is that you know on an ongoing basis for these cases? Like I see. The, no, no, no. It's not for the cases. It's not for the cases. Like like la the last meeting, we had a, a whole conversation about regulations and oh. what do we want to do. So that piece. So if, if you guys said okay, of the ten things we discussed, this is the one we want to do. You know, Blair, can you help us out with that? Can you do a little research? Can you draft, you know, some some draft language or something like that? Check. Okay. You know, things like that. Um, and it's that's super helpful. <coughs> so. Having. Yeah. So, so you, that's the stuff that's not like time dependent. It's not. You know, that's why I say softer. It's just it's not as. Well, it has you to be say done. you're going to separate like time for um, a case. Um, or build towards a case. What what are you reviewing our ordin ordinances and regulations relative to yes. the proposal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. Because I do see that the um, in town engineer um, consultant does that, but they they seem to put a lot of stuff in there as questions. Like you know, well, we, we, you know, how does the board feel about this idea? Or we see this. What is the board's interpretation? And then um, a Certain applications might actually I can't talk about any one, but it's possible that they take those engineer comments and as comments and not our decision. So um, well, they get our decision when we make our motions <coughs> anyway. But but thank you very much for that. Can you email us? I was just going to ask. Can you? Um, Send that to Alana to send out to the members. I think it's already been sent to Alana, but I'll make sure of it. Okay. Okay. Because I know I just got it today. Yep. Do you want the paper copies then? I do. Okay. I don't I'll know how many it. you have, but like I said, I printed. I have mine. enough. I have eight for of of the contract and the the new fee schedule. Okay. And the fee schedule's track changes, so you can see how it's different. Blair, how are we all doing compared to other towns? I, I have no chance to look at it. <laughs> you want to pass it down? Oh, oh, is that what we're doing? Yeah. 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 No, no. Okay, <laughs> let's go. Away. Can pass that over to Buzz, please? Um, while you're passing those around, the other thing on this agenda is public comment, and we have no public here. They all left. So we'll I'll just have to walk around. That. All right. Uh, Which one is that? It's good. We still have to open and close you the public a comment thing. period, yeah. or if there's nobody here. Nobody here. Okay. Yeah. No. It's not. Wasn't sure if that was a procedural oh, thing that's just required no matter what. No, it's somebody not. Somebody comes running through the door or something. It's something that the will do. Okay. Make it Thank you. The other thing she. Uh, Alana put in was the minutes from April 24th. Did anyone have a chance to look at those? I did. Any? I have no changes. Did, did. the secretary look at them? I did not. Uh, I spent an infinite amount of time looking through the whole file for this okay. other case and so never got to that. Why don't we? Can hold we keep off? this until the next yeah. meeting? Yeah. Yeah. I don't. 
I don't feel like I've looked at this either. All right, yeah, so we will uh, I'll make a post mo postpone the approval of minutes to the next meeting. Do we need to make a motion for that, or is that just a, well, I guess approving the minutes is a motion, so we'll just do right. that at the next meeting. It, is there um, requirements that if people, if we don't post those in a certain time period that it's... They're okay. posted as unofficial minutes, yeah. and the... Uh, audio video is available for anyone who would like it so we meet the letter of the law with that okay that's what two days or something 48 hours it's five, days. Five, five, five days okay. it's five days unless it's, it's a good dri then i think you have like maybe like two days to get it to them gotcha. just to get them to let them know gotcha. and you have to give them like the most rawest of minutes that you have to get so we do a pretty good job then because we get the the minutes are usually up in a day or two after right i honestly don't know sometimes they're well the, the audio part and the rough minutes are usually available right yeah pretty pretty quick but so i guess the audio part's been a little <laughs> iffy in the first part of this year but thanks to tech get that right. all set back on track <laughs> yay all right staff board um updates anybody buzz all set skip um we got this thing from the town of raymond about martin woods yes um, it didn't get on the agenda for some reason, you're right. I, I don't know that there's any reason for discussion, but it wasn't obvious to me that it's even close or near to us, and I don't think there's anybody in that particular volume of things is going to affect this town in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, they came to us, was it last year, John? Raymond? Yeah. yeah. Was, mean, was, or was it at the beginning? Raymond? Yeah, with their about their huge development. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but again, the, the reason why we're being contacted is because we're the neighboring town. And right. Right, but it's not close to us. It's it's it's, it's because it's such a big development that it could impact you know the traffic on our roads or the need for what uh, yeah, our fire services to join other. Yeah. Right. If you, you know, have anything road, that's regional road, impact, right. you send it out once it reaches well, a certain size. Near us, right. Well, it, again, that's the key right. word. The key right. word. The key word is regional. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. So again, they're. 500 apartment building, whatever they're putting Three, on the waist, whatever. 100 and something yeah. duplexes. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's not even, that's close to the next town over, but. You know. Well, I'm sure they got notified as well. Oh, I'm sure everybody. But did. because we are in a budget I mean, town, we, we, we get did, notified. We've done things just because, you know, this development here, regional impact, is going into Raymond, where Raymond, where 156 and 27 is. We are on the border. Well, it's in a budget. Yeah. So, yeah. but this is on the other side of 101. Right. Yeah, right. it's not even close. I'm just, thank you for the letter. Yeah, Appreciate thank, it. Okay. I yeah. just wanted to make sure. So do we need to um, send reciprocate, something. send something to Raymond that says um, we're, we're good? No. No? They're doing their contractual duty to send it out to us. I Whether think we, we have a certain... Or not, we could. I mean, it's polite. Right. They sent us something. So it is polite to write Swan back. Thank you for the heads up and the notice. We see no issues with this. No. Yeah. Is that what you guys would like Alana to do? If so I need an emotion. Well, I mean, I think that's just common practice unless we actually felt we had to discuss or do something to like say, hey, we have recommendations, then we'd actually have a formal thing where right. said, this is what we recommend. If we don't, we just basically usually write back saying, thanks for the heads up. And okay. I don't think there's a vote needed. I mean, if you want to vote, you can Well, if we're going to ask Alana to do something, I'd like a motion for it. Might be nice to send them a note Skip, that says you we brought reviewed. it up. Who was the letter addressed to? A thank you letter. Yeah, it was addressed you. to the. the but was address, yeah, addressed to the planning board? Father's Day. Yeah, it's it, to it, the planning Alana, board. I, apparently, it was addressed to Alana. I'm assuming by email. All right. It came to us. It, yep. It's something that we. She's land use clerk. She can reply. Yeah. Okay, so Alana, please reply to the regional impact letter from Raymond. Let them know we've discussed it. I will She's, make a motion that we ask Alana to respond to the uh, in kind in Raymond impact that uh, we have discussed it and felt that there was no regional impact to the town Is there a second I'll say. all right it's been moved and seconded that we have Alana respond to Raymond's letter of regional impact on their case any discussion Seeing none, we shall proceed to vote. All those in favor, signify aye. by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. 
Okay. Is that all you have, Skip? Did you want to bring up um, any trainings or anything? Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Saturday. He wants to bring up Saturday, don't you? No. Well, no. I looked at it, but no. Okay. That's online, though, right? It is. Okay. All right. Because I couldn't find a location and it said online. <laughs> it was out of Concord. For the longest time, it's online. Now I signed up for it. So I'm, I'm glued to a computer on that lovely Saturday afternoon in May. I'm good. Thank yeah. you. Okay, so you're all set. I'll do it. All right, Chris, anything? Um, Quick? No, I'm, I'm on the, um, that meeting, too, and okay. I've been studying our stuff and trying to get fully up to speed. There's a lot here. I know. It, wow. It doesn't, it doesn't all get learned in a day, does it? No. <laughs> no. Sometimes it takes hammers. <laughs> yes. John, anything on the BOS side of the world? Um, got the playground set all there. Yeah, That's good. good. Uh, Mars Project, uh, Mars uh, became playable over there. They're playing games. And they're playing games. They yeah. had a great turnout this weekend, and it was for softball and for baseball. And they Did I hear that those still aren't regulation size fields? Mm. I don't know anything about Little League Baseball, so you got me. Okay, because so that perfect. was what we were had been told it was going to be. Let's talk about actually making a frisbee um, golf disc, thing off disc golf. golf, disc golf, disc golf, oh, frisbee, disc golf, yeah. frisbee golf. So, oh. Hopefully, it turns out to be a nice thing. We have, the majority of the meeting was uh, reading emails about public comments and everything. So, if you want to go into any details about that, watch the video because it's too long for me to bother explaining or even bother <laughs> wanting to go through. Uh, we had a regular household stuff that we had to take care of, uh, but it wasn't that it, there was nothing that was brought up that I don't think that changed the world anyway. So no, the no. world is still spinning in the right direction. Okay. It is still spinning in the right directions. Did 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 you guys there was a lot merger thing that you guys needed to do something sign off or do something? Yeah, it's all done. Yeah. yeah, they did that. Oh, okay. yeah. That. Oh, I, I, okay. That's just household regular stuff. I, yeah, I don't know yeah. if that go, how oh, yeah, that yeah, goes. Yeah. I just, yeah, I just went and signed, looked it over to and we voted uh, mm -hmm. to approve the thing. So the board voted on it. Said yes, and I signed off on it. Okay. Bye. All right. Go ahead. Nothing from you. No, nope. I'm good. Um, I will be doing the hard road to travel workshop tomorrow uh, morning, like first half of the day, uh, doing the online version. So I will. Maybe have some things to bring back to the board at the next meeting. Oh, good. Based on that, um, and the Saturday one, I'm going to try to attend, but <laughs> it's going to be a. We'll see. I'll, I'll, do, I'll do my best to attend that one too. Definitely the hard road to travel, but we'll see about the Saturdays as well. What is that one, Drew? I, I know what it is. But when is that? It's tomorrow from 9 a.m. to 1:30 p.m. Something like that. It's both. It's a hybrid, you know, online in Concord. Or, sorry, in person in Concord or online yeah. on the general web. Okay. That, that's that's actually probably a really good thing for us if we can hit yeah. that because uh, I I have the book. In fact, I have it right here in my my case, and um, I read I read it like five times, and it's yeah. still makes my brain spin and try to figure out um, roads and how they get to be a road and yeah. it's I don't have the actual book but I did you know find online copies when the emergency lane stuff was going on in town because I live on an emerge still on an emergency lane not on one of the ones that was voted in yeah um, and so I was trying to you know, I didn't have the house for that long before all the stuff came up and so what the heck is an Surprise. emergency lane and so I had a little bit of a uh, reading to do but yeah, that, that it's would a be lot something of interesting to, stuff. Uh, selectmen, if you guys want to. <laughs> you, you have a conundrum <laughs> here in this town, if, if you will. There is. There, the guy that wrote that book used to teach. He's trying to poke a bear, class. isn't he? Yeah, right. Right. It seems it's like it's. the same as the book. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there isn't a it's road. a lot of stuff. We can talk about that, too. There isn't a road conundrum that's going on in this town. There was a Warren article that was passed that was so vague that made <laughs> the issue a little more difficult to interpret. But as a colonial, I don't know if it's messed up. It's just different ways of interpreting how that's supposed to be read due to the vagueness of it. Remember the discussion we, that uh, Pete Landry and I were having? It's the same deal. Yeah. Same yeah. deal. 
Yeah. All right, all Doug, yes. anything all else, wrong. Doug? No, nope. I'm all set. I started to read the same book, and it's like reading a dictionary. <laughs> you know, Put you to sleep, though, don't uh, it, it, you? Know. I will be doing the hard road to travel as well, but I'll be doing it virtually, so we'll Thank see you there. But Oh, you're, no, you're doing, doing it, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to that one because that this whole roads thing, I've only worked in urban areas where roads are already built, so <laughs> this whole world, the road yeah. thing is a new thing to me. So, I, I mean, I've picked up a lot since I've been here, but yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. Um, beyond that, um, the New Hampshire Planners Association will be doing their annual meeting in June in, 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 in Keene. I, it's a professional meeting, but I do believe it's open to um, board members if you are interested. So keep an eye out for it. Um, Kyle in our office was the organizer of it, so he's making us push it heavily to get good attendance <laughs> and stuff. But um, the New Hampshire Planners Association is kind of the little statewide, you know, localish um, version of what's called NECAPA, which is the Northern New England um, Planners Association, which is Vermont, Maine, and New Hampshire. So, um, you know, that's, that's like our professional organization in the APA, the American Association, uh, American Planners Association is, is our sort of mothership organization based out of DC and stuff. So, um, yeah, the New England Plan, uh, the New Hampshire Planners Association annual meeting will be in, um, in June. So keep your eye out for that. All right. One last note, and again, I'm not picking on anybody here, but it's just happening all over. I've stated before at different meetings. When anytime we're addressing a member or a board or somebody here is in front of us, and this is for budget, this is for, planning, this is for board of selectmen, your opinion should be stressed as your opinion and not as we. Because we're all individuals and we all have our own vote at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter even when it comes to, and I joke to you about reading the minutes and whatever, or reading the things here. You know, it's I didn't have the choice, not we didn't have the choice to read. And just to be clear, so that everybody is individualized on our own opinions and that we're not grouped together. Oh, That's because I said we it. didn't have a chance to read them all. And again, well, just, I was referring to the we that it, have said I, it, it in the thing. But that's not even, I mean, broadly over the town, we have a lot of statements that come out and people are using the terms as we as a group, and it's not, it's an individual statement. So I should and speak so, for self like I was taught years abs ago. Again, it's just for clarification. So even again, not, not picking on what you have, you have good comments, and I appreciate everything you said tonight. I really do. It was very informative and great. But what you were saying was directed as your opinion to him on what you think, not on what we think. Just, and that should just be stated that, that, that when, when we're talking, and again, every question is great. Ask as many as you want. For whatever reason you want to ask them, you go right ahead. But just make sure that the questions you're asking are directed as yourself and not as we as a board. So we have to remember to add those three words. Well, it's in just, my opinion. It's, in my opinion, or it's just my clarification, just, just so that the applicant knows because like he said, when I did 3% or whatever, the 1%, I don't recall that as being the board telling them to do it. We didn't say as a board, you need to come back as three. No. That never came up. It was part of the discussion. And that was his problem that he did it, not ours. You know? But again, it's just I, to, I to was surprised to see that. And that yeah. I was too. But John, I, I like, take your okay. point, though. It's... I. I will be more careful with no, how I again, present just my because No, I might not agree with it is, you. And no, you're going to hear me speak up and say, listen, I don't agree enough. And then that doesn't sound good when I'm, I'm totally sitting here publicly it. disagreeing with you. And I don't I'm want to I'm just more used those. to saying a we in general, but in a setting like this, totally yeah. valid. And I, I should we should do be that. Having, I agree. We as a board here, and again, we're talking, you know, as we disagree, we shouldn't be bickering back and forth. It doesn't make us look any good right. as right. if me and you start arguing about yeah. something. Yeah. You know, it's your opinion. And then when we come all together and we're finalizing the plans and we talk as a group, that's when we we can discuss back and forth sense, about, yeah. no, I don't think what you're right. I don't think, it, and we had that part of the discussion yeah. then, just not with the applicant. Well, I, makes I, sense. it is, I think it's good that we all have different perspectives that I you know, we can all did. bring to the table here. And, um, said we did. and different opinions and you know what might be more important to you know one person might be not as important to another and um, so you know it's different observations 
And well, Chris, we all have. I absolutely agree with that's what I said. Speak your mind, speak whatever you want, but make sure that you're speaking to the applicant and you're not mentioning that as we are a group yeah. asking the applicant something where we haven't voted on anything. We haven't had our, at every, you'll know when we get longer in, you'll see that when we come to the end, we're going to have our, okay, we close public comment, we close this, and then it's just us talking as a board. That's when you start hammering out different details we just if, and even then is i have a problem with this and anybody else have a problem with this well, okay, right, well, yeah, okay. right. it's that's just that's it's just the way to clarify and again and again that's just something that's been happening where, where i sat on budget committee this year you know and you saw that happening where people were complaining about this and they're saying you know everybody and it's like really it's not everybody it's your opinion that it's everybody but it's really not everybody you know and it's just to get well at the beginning of the so. meeting I, I brought up the road agent and the driveway approvals because as I read our regulations I'm seeing that you know they need to put stuff on the plan that shows the driveways that are approvable and um, and if we don't have somebody third party looking at that and reviewing that then you know we how do we know these driveways are approvable or buildable or viable or have site distance or positive grades and all this stuff so um, it's in our regulation, so do I, I, I found a lot of things in our regulations that raised questions. One said, all roads shall be 24 feet, and this is a 22-foot road, and if they have curbs, they're going to be two feet wider, which is a tw increased by two feet to be 26, and it seems like this is a 22-foot road, and it's not 24 feet, so I don't recall how that got to be there. Um, maybe it was voted or discussed at a prior meeting. Maybe there's some other exception here, but I'm reading the regulations. I'm charged with trying to understand these. Absolutely. We have no opportunity to discuss these different ideas. We, we can't do. talk to, huh? We do. And well, we, here. Hopefully we are now. No, but I'm just saying it, 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 during the meeting, you do have an opportunity to discuss. We can't discuss specifics to a case without the applicant here, that's just not allowed. Okay. So even your comments. But any questions that you have, like if you have right. questions on the driveway. All right. Bing it, I'm gonna, here. So Slam my the... question is not regarding this case, it's regarding our regulations. Our regulations say the thou shalt have a 24 foot driveway or road, period. How, what, what are the methods to make it a 22 foot road or narrower than that? A waiver you would, and, make a, you would make a waiver request and was a waiver I, I mean it, this one's been a long while I'd have to go back and look yeah I would too and again we can't I know we voted on waivers case. we voted on waivers months ago um, there were some initial requests prior to this slope one that uh, we did vote on that may have been one of them I don't recall okay. I did go through every Thing on post on Alana's great. She posts everything on the website or a lot of stuff on there, which is great. Um, and when you look at other towns, uh, they don't do that. And um, oh, wow. it, oh, it's horrible. Other towns. I, no, I went to a meeting at another town. A little job. Actually. I, I went to a meeting at another town recently, and I will give everybody here absolute thumbs up on professionalism and what we're doing compared to this other town. Wow, I, I don't want to say which town or whatever, but it just made me scratch my head. I was kind of embarrassed to be watching <laughs> this particular board. It was embarrassing. Well, uh, anyway. may, maybe you could. Um... If, if you go through the minutes of when this was on the agenda, yeah. it'll be in the agenda. There's no notice maybe. of decision for waivers. Well, waivers waivers aren't posted as a separate document. They would be. They would be indicated in the minutes that's where you'd have to find them oh okay thank and i i will do that and i think there was a meeting where this um before me uh what had been had come up yeah so, there was a couple i think there was at least a couple meetings before yes. you guys were all sworn in and, and, yes. and seated before right okay so that that's a thank you that's a great point i will do that because I, I was trying to discover this is what i'm reading and this is what i'm seeing and what's you why might, you might even Give Alana a chance. I think isn't she at a? I think she's at a training or something today. But um, give her a day or two, and then 
ask her if she remembers when the waiver requests came in because she might remember what those Yeah, are. I mean, you can look at the initial application document, too. That would have uh, any waiver requests. Yeah. But right. it's yeah. possible that they added ones, like I said, like the slope one. It came up, I think, along the way. Yeah. Right? So, um, so that, that happens. Um, and, and, and somebody... Um, Talking about the specific meeting, but somebody brought up curbing, and the guidelines, our regulations say granite curbing, and um, so their their slope, um, Cape Cod cur curbs or something. So I assume also that that was on a waiver somewhere, but I I well, did that, not see that. That was brought up again tonight too, and let's not keep getting back into this case. Yeah. You're going to get us into trouble. Yeah, let's put it. Let's put a pin in that one for for now, feet. and you guys can That's look into that. Mm -hmm. But in the subdivision, it may have something less in regards to open space. All right. Anything else? If not, I'll take a On motion to adjourn. Are we ready to land this plane? Yes. Gentlemen, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Is there a second? I'll second. There's been a motion to adjourn and a second. Are there any? Is there any further discussion? No discussion on the motion to adjourn. I think we should. Robert's rules. There's been a motion and a second. Yeah, there's no discussion on a motion to adjourn. I think we should discuss. You have a question, Buzz? I'm just, I'm just being, I'm just being a sticker. I'm just being a sticker. Just a point of order. You didn't ask for public. That's my favorite rule in Robert's rules. I'm sorry. I'm trying to hear Buzz. What did you say? You didn't ask for public comments. I did. I said we didn't have any public. Thank you. She did. Wow, yeah. you guys are like, no, I, do you, no, don't I, do this to no, Ed. I, I, I made a note. As Want a secretary, <laughs> I documented and noted that she did say that we have All no. those in favor of adjourning, signify by saying aye. 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 And then go shut that off. Yes. <laughs>